Hey guys, welcome back to some more reviews. The Explorer of Horror here, the Horribly. Welcome back, and today we'll be wrapping up the reviews on the Hills of Eyes franchise. Now, this has been a series of reviews that was really fun to do, definitely a blast to do. Um, I want to thank everybody for watching these reviews. It was really cool going back and rewatching them again and reviewing them. Uh, it's definitely a franchise that is weird in the fact that I only really don't like one movie, and that was The Hills of Eyes Part 2 from 1984, which I did a really in-depth review, 30 minutes long, I apologize about that, uh, and there's a lot of reasons why that movie didn't work, but I love the first movie from 1977, I love the remake, and I actually do quite enjoy the sequel. Today we'll be getting to the final Hills of Eyes review, at least the final official Hills of Eyes review, and that's going to be on... The Hills of Eyes 2 from 2007. Now, again, I got both versions of this film, mainly because I had this one already, which is the theatrical cut, and then I picked this one up later. And I figured, why not keep both cuts? I watched them back to back. Really, honestly, there's no difference between these two cuts. I mean, maybe an extra couple seconds of blood, or maybe an extra couple seconds of gore. Really not much of a difference, but I did watch them back to back. Not recently, but uh, I have seen, you know, both versions of this film. And Hills of Ice 2 is a sequel that I honestly think is pretty fun. This is a pretty fun movie. This is kind of what I wish the original Hills of Ice 2 would have done, you know. Only with that movie, I would have had more of a story if I would have done it, I guess. <laughs> the way, like, you know, I would have done it was having it more focused on Bobby and Ruby's characters from the first movie. But, you know, that didn't happen with that film. But I, what I mean by that is to have a simplistic formula, to go straight forward with the slasher formula, have fun, have gore, have some decent characters in there have it be different than the first movie, be very unique, and be very, very gory. In the sequel, I know there aren't fans of it. There's not many fans of it. Uh, this is a better Hills of Ice 2 than the original Hills of Ice 2. I believe this was written by Wes Craven and his son. And uh, it was written very fast, like a, a week, maybe a week or two. The script was written for this film, so it was it was written extremely fast. Um, and what's crazy is it's still trying to be a pretty fun film. You know, is it perfect? I wouldn't say it's perfect, but for what the movie is, it's a really fun film. And it doesn't really have to be perfect. I mean, I really wasn't expecting a perfect sequel, you know. <clears throat> It just, it's a really fun movie, very entertaining, very much on the entertainment side. Now, this came out in 2007, a year after the first movie. Production for this movie went right in there really fast. It came out the very next year, which is usually a bad sign for sequels because that means they're rushed. I mean, Halloween 5, you have Nightmare on Elm Street 5, which I like Nightmare on Elm Street 5. Uh... Friday the 13th is probably the best horror series to do that, where it's a year after the movie came out, they release a sequel. Um, but in this movie's case, it really didn't affect the film. In the plot, you have a new set of mutants up in the hills. They are raping people, raping women, breeding, trying to keep the bloodline going. And you actually have Michael Bailey Smith coming back in this one to play the main bad guy, the main mutant. And uh, he's trying to breed women, but the babies don't live very long, so the bloodline really isn't continuing. Um, the movie opens with a very intense scene. I mean, it opens up with a birth scene, and it's a really crazy, really intense, uh, gory as hell and definitely one hell of a way to open a film. It was really intense. And uh, the story, I mean, you have a group of National Guard trainees. They're doing this simulation, kind of like a simulated mission. Um, like an Afghan, I guess you could say, 
Afghanistan war kind of simulated mission and uh, the group kind of rushes into this mission they don't really think about things and they don't really work as a team and they end up failing this mission and uh, I actually love the, the sergeant guy he says congratulations you're all dead <laughs> um, so they basically they fail this training course and they're getting ready to head across back to the desert and they hear about this group of missing soldiers. And they decided to go in the hills to try and figure out what's going on. It becomes a slasher movie. You got gore. You got them being picked off one by one. You got some cool scenes. Yeah. A really awesome movie. I really, I will be honest, I don't find too many problems with it. There's a few problems with the film. But to be honest, Toes of Ice 2 is a pretty damn good sequel in my opinion. I really don't get to the hate with this movie. It's got a different atmosphere. It's directed by Martin Wines, who uh, don't really know what else he's made. I'm going to try and get on his uh, filmography here. But he had a pretty cool look to this film. He did a lot of shorts. A lot of shorts. A lot of direct-to-video stuff. Uh, he made this in Grim Love. And I don't think he made anything else. Everything else is just shorts. Uh, looks like music videos, maybe. Uh, a couple uh, live things. So it didn't really make too many movies. I thought he had a pretty decent atmosphere to this movie. It didn't look, you know, 100% like the first movie. And there's a lot of great scenes of the tunnels and mine shafts. Really, really great atmosphere there. And the movie, as far as pauses go, it's a very fast film. It's about an hour and 29 minutes. goes by in a flash. You have <clears throat> really good special effects. Uh, there is some CGI in there, which I'll give into the negatives. But the positives, there is a lot of practical effects. A lot of great practical effects and gore. Um, the mutants still look cool. I'll get into a little bit more on that with the negatives. But the mutants, the makeup looks cool. Um, the cast does a pretty decent job. I actually don't think this cast did a bad job at all. The lead girl, the lead guy, uh, a couple of the side characters. I ended up liking this cast quite a bit. It wasn't really a bad cast. I wouldn't say it's as strong as this movie's cast, but again, I really didn't have a problem with the cast. You know, you have one guy who's kind of the asshole. You have, uh... One guy who's kind of this cocky dude. You have the romantic couple. The lead chick. The lead guy who's kind of this dude who is in there, but didn't really want to be in there. And he's not sure about things. Decent actors and a decent cast, I will say. And the death scenes are pretty interesting. You have a guy who gets pulled up, his arm cut off, and falls down the cliff all the way to the bottom. You see the full shot. And you see the head explode. Uh, granted, you can tell there's a little bit of CGI in there, but it didn't look bad. You have a scene which is pretty intense where they're trying to climb on this cliff and the rope gets cut and a couple of the soldiers fall to their deaths. Um, and it's really a movie where it's more about the mind games and trying to figure out what's going on, where the mutants are. You have a really brutal death scene where a guy gets pulled into a little tiny crevice in the hills, like this like this side of this hill. And he gets pulled in there by one leg, and he gets pulled all the way in. It breaks his leg, folds his leg up, blood everywhere. You have a really just awful scene where they find somebody literally in the toilet, in this toilet. Um, and they learn that these mutants are trying to breed people and trying to continue the bloodline and they're trying to get out of there and survive and kill these mutants in the hills. Um, and a couple scenes I really enjoy, like I said, that one scene where the guy gets pretty much drugged into this crevice and bloody. Um, a lot of the just shots of the atmosphere, again, this is a pretty well-filmed movie, has a lot of great day scene atmospheres. I don't really remember any night sequences, but they make up for that with the like mine shaft sequences, so that was pretty cool. 
speaking of it, the mineshaft atmosphere was pretty awesome. Seeing these mines definitely, definitely very different. Um, the very end of the movie, you have a couple survivors. They end up killing this big bad villain. Um, you have them being kind of badasses. I mean, this guy kills this one guy. I believe his name is Lizard. The character's name is Lizard. And it's a really cool idea of that mutant where half is normal and half is really fucked up and he can actually camouflage with the rocks. I like that. And it's actually a really early uh, appearance by Derek Mears, who would go on to be in Hatchet 3 and Friday the 13th from 2009, the remake, playing Jason. He has a really early cameo in this film. Not really a cameo, it's just an early performance. Playing, I believe, is the character's name is Lizard. Um... And he has a cool death scene where the lead guy just smashes his head in with a rock. Practical effect, gory, brains flying everywhere. Very, very bloody scene, brutal scene. Um, it's definitely a mean-spirited film. Uh, there is an implied rape scene. And uh, it's really, again, it's really intense. I don't really like seeing rape scenes in films, but this one wasn't... Like extremely graphic, but uh, it was really intense, really suspenseful, um, and it was just an intense sequence. Um, and it's just a lot of stuff I enjoyed: the death scenes, the gore, the atmosphere, um, the fast-paced uh, runtime, the ending, the characters I thought were decent. I like how it's different. It's not just another family going out there in the hills. It's these National Guard trainees. They're different. They got guns, but they really can't use them because most of them don't have live rounds. Um, made it interesting because it was something that I didn't really see get done in any other horror films about these trainees. More about just regular soldiers. These are just trainees. I like that idea. Yeah, it's not boring. It's fast paced. As far as problems go though, I will say the mutants are like cool looking as far as the makeup goes, but a lot of them don't really have any traits besides maybe the big giant bad villain guy and the lizard mutant. The others, like you have one that's blind, one that has this meat cleaver not really any other ones. I mean, the the rest of them just kind of look like normal mutants. Not really like in the Hills of Eyes remake. They had they all had an interesting look. Here, some of them don't really look as interesting, but they still look good. The makeup on them looked good. They still looked creepy, um, so it wasn't really a problem. There is a bit of CGI in there. You could tell the script was written pretty fast. I mean, some of the dialogue isn't really bad. It's just you could kind of tell they really rushed the sequel out there. And I kind of wish it would, would have been given a little bit more time to be in production. Not a bad thing. Just you could kind of tell with certain dialogue and certain scenes and the way they edit it in certain scenes. You could tell it was a very fast production. Um, came out the next year. And... Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's not really any big problems besides those little things. They're honestly little things, little nitpicks here and there. Overall, though, it's a great sequel, in my opinion. Uh, it's a 5.1. A little too low for this sequel. It's not that bad. It's not anything groundbreaking, but I don't think it really needs to be. I think it, it serves its purpose. It is what it is. It's a very fun film. It's a very fun time. And uh, I enjoyed Hills of Ice, too. There are fates worse than death. Yeah, which I also like this poster too. Pretty cool marketing. I remember seeing the teaser for this film. I was watching 28 Weeks Later on DVD way back when 28 Days Later first came. Or not 28 Days Later, 28 Weeks Later. Uh, I remember watching that DVD and there was a teaser for this movie on there. And it just shows this. It shows a guy dragging this body... And then another one comes in the frame, and it's a POV shot of them dragging them through the desert, and it says Hills of Ice 2. Pretty cool teaser, pretty cool advertising. It's a fun movie, man. It's really fun. It's gore, 
gory. It's just gore. It's gory. It's it's definitely very violent. It's very brutal. Fast paced. Good cast. Some badass moments for the cast. I guess another nitpick for me is the ending of the film. Like the very very last shot of the film is a sequel ending where you see the hand of this character right here. Which maybe his name was Lizard. I can't remember. Maybe he was Lizard. Maybe this was a different character. I don't know. Either or, you see this hand at the end of the movie of uh, Hills of Ice 2 implying that this guy is still alive, which I'm like, how is this character still alive? He got shot by a shotgun in the chest, in the neck, got pushed off a cliff. They even show a shot of the dead body and the head has just exploded. So there's no way... So the ending of this movie, the sequel ending, where you see the hand on a computer, which is that hand, so maybe that character came back. I'm like, how in the hell is that possible? But, again, a little nitpick, nothing really too serious, nothing really too bad. Yeah, man, it's a sequel that isn't bad at all. It's pretty decent, fun, pretty good, honestly. Pretty Honestly, a pretty good and fun time, is the way I'd put it. It's a fun time, it's gory, it's, it's fast-paced, it's brutal. A decent cast, decent mutants. Um, I guess another thing I kind of would say too, maybe the music really isn't too great, but again, a little problem, nothing too serious. Um, it wasn't really bad music, it was just music that, you know... Again, I don't really think it was really a problem, but it's a really, really fun sequel. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun talking Hills of Eyes with you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. These... Technically are the end of the reviews, but I will be discussing films later on that were supposedly, you know, I almost did air quotations with three fingers. Yeah, I almost looked really stupid doing that, but supposedly there's a couple Hills of Ice Part 3s out there. Not official movies, but one of those cases where they put Hills of Ice on three, uh, Hills, of, Hills of Ice Part 3 on there, and they just said, eh. It's not Hills of Eyes Part 3, it's, you know, this movie. I'll be getting to those movies later on. And one of them is actually requests, so I'll get to that one. But, yeah, Hills of Eyes 2, it's been awesome talking about Hills of Eyes. Uh, been a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for watching these reviews. I appreciate all the support. I'm going to give Hills of Eyes 2 a... I'm going to give it a 7. It's a pretty good movie. I'm being very generous, but I do really enjoy Hills of Eyes 2, the remake. It's a better Hills of Ice 2. It's well done. It's a great sequel. Uh, underrated, I would even say. Dare I say underrated. Um, just a pretty good sequel. Pretty awesome sequel. But anyways, guys, let me know your guys' thoughts on this film in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching the Hills of Ice review. It's been a blast. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something. I know I'm forgetting something. I might type in the comments below once I remember it. But... For now, I'll see you guys later. Hills of Ice, do get to 7 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching. The Explorer 4 is out. Have a good day, guys. Peace.